Hello everyone, this is Club 10M Plus's exciting new podcast that's here for you. We are all about stories, new developments and learning about individuals. Our hope is that you will join us every week to hear about our distinguished guests. We hope to inspire you, bring you laughter and make you reflect. Our guests come from all walks of life and primarily they want to share their stories. Not sure about you, but I love a good story. So Club 10M Plus have devoted their time to creating these podcasts, to sharing great ideas and stories and much more. So tune in every week to make sure that you don't miss out. It could be you next week. Want to know more? We want to hear your stories. So sign up and be our next guest. Hello everyone and it's a real pleasure to have Greg Jenkins on today and we're going to probably look at a story. I think you're going to tell us about leadership. Greg, I'm handing over to you and you can tell a little bit about yourself as well. Thanks. Well, thank you so much, Krista. I appreciate uh, you having me on your show today and uh, yeah, I I love talking about uh, leadership I think especially as it applies to diversity and inclusion. And, uh, you know, when we were getting ready for this, you know, you asked me to think of a story and share a story with your listeners. And and I think the the story that I want to share is is sometimes when you think you're going to go into something that you don't want to do, but then you find out later it was like the best thing in your life to do. uh, And it really turned into a passion. And so uh, that's what I want to share with, with your listeners today. So just briefly, uh, a little background. I spent over 28 years in the United States Army, and I uh, I worked and was stationed in various places in the U.S. Uh, I was uh, in Germany for almost 10 years, South Korea, Iraq, and then finished up my 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 career at the Pentagon. But you know, coming out of Iraq, I was going to retire. And then the army said, no, 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 we want you to go learn about this diversity and and equity and inclusion thing and and help lead it. And I got to tell you, Krista, I didn't want to do any of that uh, because I felt like I'm, you know, I'm this, I'm this older white straight male. And that really isn't for me because I thought that was for like, you know, programs for women and minorities. And I'm like, oh no, this is, I must be being, you know, I, if this is like punishment for something I did and uh, that was what I thought. And, and so I was really not very happy about that, but I, um, you know, I was, a, I was a good soldier and I thought, well, okay, you know, I'll, I, I'll, I'll go do this, this training and learn about this topic, but I'm really not happy going into it. Uh, so anyway, that's the, that's the premise, if you will. But you know what, Chris, I get in to this process. Uh, I went to a school that uh, it's called the Defense Equal Opportunity Management Institute, and that school has been training military members and, and other various folks uh, about diversity and equity and inclusion for over 50 years. And what I, when I went in not wanting to go, but then went through that process of learning about those topics and learning about myself and learning about others, it really lit a passion inside of me uh, that's been burning very brightly since 2005. So uh, I ended up finishing my career at the Pentagon, where we helped stand up the Army's first ever diversity program, and I've been doing that work ever since, and uh, I I enjoy it immensely. I get to meet wonderful people like yourself and 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 other folks, other podcasts, and opportunities to blog, and and uh, other various people in the space, and it has opened doors that I never anticipated, and I think that's the message I would like to share with your listeners is that. You know, sometimes the thing you don't want to do is maybe the best thing you need to do Um, sometimes. And and if you if you maybe like pause for a minute, take a step back and and say, you know, I really don't want to do this, but let me let me check it out and see what where this goes. And and maybe this is something that is unexpected, but could be absolutely miraculous. And it really was for me. it, It changed my me personally and professionally. And I'm so glad that that has happened to me. I just want to pick up on you saying, um, you know, literally, I didn't want to do it. 
Now, is that is that coming from a place of fear or or distrust, or you didn't trust yourself to do it? Because I mean, as leaders, sometimes you know, opening up a new space that we know nothing about can be quite intimidating. So, just explain a little bit. Where did that come from? Oh, Krista, that is a really good question because it was absolutely fear. And so when I went to this school, I was already at 20 years in the military. I was already a successful senior leader. And my fear was I was going to have to open up and and talk about things like racism and sexism and discrimination and power and privilege. And and I, I didn't feel comfortable being able to speak about those things at all. I was afraid. And, and so my response, my initial response to that was like, no, I don't want to do it, deflect, avoid, rationalize, justify some way to get out of it. But when I boil it down, it was exactly what you just said, Krista. It was about fear that I would appear uninformed, that I would make mistakes. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to say those kinds of things. So I, looking back, I never said anything about those topics like racism, prejudice, and sexism and, and, and those kinds of things. But I think going through that process, it really helped me become a much, much better leader, uh, which is why I like to combine diversity, equity, inclusion, and leadership. Uh, but it was, it was clearly fear. There's no question about it. But glad I, glad I, uh, I'm glad I was able to go through that process. Um, so, not because I knew what I was doing. <laughs> just, but just trying listen. to figure it out. I think sometimes the best times is when you put your foot forward and you say yes, and you have no idea what the journey is going to bring to you. Um, I know in my experience that's happened several times. So when you actually take the lead on something and you decide to do something differently, the opposition flies at you. And then I, I almost, I'm, I'm quite controversial because that then tells me I'm on the right path. If I'm coming up against challenges and obstacles, I know this is what I need to keep doing and learning. So just going back to your experience, I mean, you know, the Pentagon, you're a senior officer and all of a sudden you're an epiphany and you're changing after 20 years. I mean, in terms of your head and what you were doing, that must have been something else. And, you know, just just dive in a little bit so so people can appreciate where you were and where you've moved to, I should say. Yeah, you know, you know, when you go through the process that 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 that, Institute of Education provides, it isn't just sitting down and reading some books and writing some paper and doing some research. You have to participate, actively participate in a, in small group settings. And it, it's, it's a very well-designed program that provides you almost, I don't want to say forces you, but you're in a position or you're in a condition or a situation where you have to start talking with people different from yourself about topics. And in my case, I never spoke about. And that was, that was really frightening. And so I, and I think because frightening for me, because I, I liked, I liked to think of myself as like, Hey, I'm a pretty good guy. You know, I've, I've had had a successful career and, and I couldn't possibly harbor any ill will or, or any, any, you know, darker negative things inside of me. I just have, I don't want to, I don't want to think of myself that way, but I think having to face those things that, that, you know, um, people often bury, I buried over many, many years. And then having that, bring that out into the sunlight uh, is not a pleasant experience initially, but then you start to like, you know, hey, maybe maybe you're not this great, as great a guy as you think you'd like to think you are. And that's okay. And let's take a look at that a little bit. And And that became such a cathartic awakening process, if you will, uh, of uh, like uh, unloading things that, you know, been hanging on to for, for probably all of my life or, or through as my life progressed. And so going kind of through the mud, you know, digging in the dirt, like Peter Gabriel would say, uh, that's an old reference I know. Digging through your own dirt, right? And kind of finding out that the parts, the parts uh, of life that hurt you or disappointed you 
uh, or, or didn't meet your expectation, and then being able to look at those things and let them go. And um, yeah, oh, what a process. Hard, yeah. but man, is it worth it. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, hats off to you for, uh, first and foremost for doing that. And yes, I, I, you know, it's never easy to face yourself. And I always think of uh, Michael Jackson's song when, when anyone says that to me, it's like a man in the mirror. And you have to start with a man in the mirror. And sometimes that is probably the hardest challenge life can throw at you. You, you have to face and your demons, your fears and all the rest of it. So if anything about today is like, we have to face our fears and totally get a grip of that and work with it. And, and it's possible and we can do it. It's not, it's not a difficult thing, and especially with what we've all been through just recently. And uh, I think, you know, um, this pandemic has taught us all that we need to be a bit more resilient. Our mental health has really suffered during this time. And um, this is about facing the man in the mirror every day and saying, I can do this. It's not an issue. Greg, I can't believe the time has gone <laughs> so quickly. <laughs> but I really want to say thank you for taking this time. I appreciate you being online this time for me. And we'll definitely speak again because I'm sure you've got a lot more stories to tell me. That can't be just the, the only one. So I look forward to speaking to you again. And thank you. Thank you so much, Krista. Thank you for having me on. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. This is Club 10 M. Plus's exciting new podcast that's here for you. We are all about stories, new developments, and learning about individuals. Our hope is that you will join us every week to hear about our distinguished guests. We hope to inspire you, bring you laughter, and make you reflect. Our guests come from all walks of life, and primarily, they want to share their stories. Not sure about you, but I love a good story. So Club 10M Plus have devoted their time to creating these podcasts, to sharing great ideas and stories and much more. So tune in every week to make sure that you don't miss out. It could be you next week. Want to know more? We want to hear your stories. So sign up and be our next guest.